Hey guys, well, welcome to Tam Talks, a place for real and honest conversation. I oh like no. That. Do you know that? I didn't know what I was getting into, I real know. and honest. I okay. grabbed my husband, who is the lead senior pastor here at Influence Church. As you guys know, I've been having our staff members come on and talk with us about my new book, Fasting for Miracles. And I thought, I need to have my husband come on because we have a lot of fun when we do these. We kind of we banter do. back and we forth. Do. Uh -huh. and so whether you're watching me now on our YouTube channel or you're listening to us on our podcast, welcome. We're gonna have some real and honest conversation about fasting and miracles. Now my book, Fasting for Miracles, as you know, I'm walking you through 21 passages of miracle stories in the Bible and then 21 parallel passages of fasting. And you know, babe, um, honestly, those are two words that we don't talk about much in the Christian church today. Mm -hmm. We don't talk a lot about fasting. It's not a practice. As you know, we didn't do that probably the first 25 years of our ministry. Right. I don't think we ever fasted. And miracles, a lot of people believe they've ceased today. So let's talk a little bit before we jump into our miracle story for today. Why don't you think most Christians practice fasting today? Well, I think, first of all, it's not convenient at all. I mean, who wants to give up food unless there's a real purpose? And I think if you can tie purpose to fasting, and say this is what fasting can do or how it can accelerate something. I remember I heard a pastor say one time, uh, I believe that fasting for my church accelerates the spiritual growth by 10x wow. compared to what was, was the year before. And I, you see transformation happen. And so I think it, it is because it, it's not taught. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if it's not taught to the congregation, the congregation's not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. If pastors haven't bought into it, for whatever reason, maybe it's just not convenient, don't know how, um, don't see the value in it, then I, I can see why people don't fast today. So if Jesus said to his di disciples, when you fast, because mm -hmm. obviously they had fasted from the whole Old Testament, mm -hmm. the religious leaders all fasted, so it was a very traditional thing they did. They wanted to understand fasting with power, mm -hmm. not tradition. So Jesus said, when you fast, and then of course he also said, some things only happen by prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. So we know Jesus fasted, he believed in fasting, and he expected his children to fast. So why do you think we're supposed to fast? Why? What power is there in fasting? Well, I, I wanna kinda back up one second before I answer that, and I, and I think we also have to look at prayer, because prayer is also at an all-time low in terms of mm -hmm. how much time people spend in prayer. Mm -hmm. I, I read a survey a few years ago, the average pastor prays five to eight minutes a day. Wow. So if, if a pastor is only praying five to eight, let's assume that the congregation might be praying less than that. Mm -hmm. So they're not in this mode of prayer, the supernatural, miracles, et cetera. Now when we go into fasting, if we say, what if you could combine fasting and prayer together, mm -hmm. Uh, to your point on uh, Jesus's comment there in, in Matthew 17, if I could if I could give my my prayer some horsepower, mm -hmm. give it some real authority, and I could accelerate and see things happening in the natural world because I'm moving in the spiritual realm, then I think we could see more people uh, fasting and praying. Because I know in my life, um, we're kind of in this mode of um, I should be fasting weekly but I'm fasting annually mm -hmm. and uh, on this concentrated thing, but I do it because it's convenient and beneficial. Mm -hmm. And convenient, I mean, churches do it. So, you know, if your church is not doing this, they should. Yeah. And it, it makes it easier for everybody to say, let's all fast together. Let's all see what God can do in our individual lives yeah. and in our church's life. Well, the book Fasting for Miracles is that very concept. We are fasting. We're bringing our spiritual sacrifice. We're bringing our discipline. As I've mentioned many times on this uh, podcast, what I'm doing is I am suppressing my flesh. Every desire I have in my flesh to fill my stomach when it growls with food, I want to gratify the desires of my flesh. If I can do it through fasting and say no to my flesh, mm -hmm. then I can do it later with other temptations and sins in my life. So I believe it's a discipline. I believe it's a practice. I believe it empowers me to understand there's other things I can get breakthrough. But the reason I've written the book, Fasting for Miracles, is because I still believe in miracles mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I believe there are miracles to be had. I've mentioned many times to you that here at Influence Church, we have a prayer wall and that we believe it says on it, expect a miracle. We believe in miracles. We expect miracles. And that's, let's just kind of segue, that's what the book's about. Today's story is actually moving from the prophet Elijah 
to Elisha. Mm -hmm. And we know that Elijah trained Elisha. He mentored him. He raised him up. But this is the miracle when Elisha looked at him and he said, give me a double portion of everything I've seen you do. Mm -hmm. You know, and how beautiful would that be if a protege came and said, I want a double portion of everything I've seen you do. And you know, we need to be raising up the next generation. You know, I, I we say that all the time here at Influence Church. We need to be raising them up. So here he is, and he says, if you see me taken, you'll receive a double portion. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about that miracle because he did see him taken up mm -hmm. and he did receive a double portion of manifestation of miracles. Yeah, and many times Elijah tried to run him off. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to remember, that he kept trying to discourage him from following that path. And I think part of that, let's call it, let's call it spiritual strategy on Elijah's part. If I can run you off, then probably you can't carry forward mm -hmm. my ministry. Mm -hmm. And remember, there were a group called a school of prophets. So there were a lot of followers that Elijah and other prophets had, uh, kind of like Jesus had disciples. Mm -hmm. And they were learning to be a prophet, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and, and yet here's this one that persevered. He persevered and, and he saw this miracle of God. Why? I think because he wanted it. Mm -hmm. uh, fasting says to God, I want it. That's good. What, are, what is it? It is what I'm after, God. It is this prayer answered. It is this healing. It is this transformational moment in my life or in the life of my family, life of my church or my nation. And so I think whenever you, you have that, in, they say, I want this. I mean, think about how many uh, stories in the Bible. Uh, well, just think about seek, ask, and knock. And the idea that there's a persistence uh, the widow in Luke 18, you know, she kept hounding the ju unrighteous judge. And finally, in desperation, he said, I'm going to give you what you want because you won't leave me alone. Mm -hmm. God, that is a parable about God. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm righteous. If an unrighteous judge will do it, how much more will I do it as a righteous judge? Yeah. You made a great observation. Let's talk about this for a minute. Elijah said to Elisha, this isn't going to be easy. Mm -hmm. And like you said, he many times tried to run him off. We aren't raising up the next generation to be strong and tough, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've right. talked about that. We've talked about, I believe the culture of today is lazy and entitled. And the fact that Elisha said he had to see how difficult it was. It was not easy for Elijah, and yet he wanted a double portion. Can you imagine asking for a double portion of the manifestations of one of the greatest prophets to live, and yet he had the faith to ask for mm -hmm. that? What do you think? Well, I think that's what I think that is the definition of faith. It is asking what seems um, unbelievable, undoable, um, outside of the the norm, and and outside of recognizable. Mm -hmm. That's that's a definition of faith. Mm -hmm. If you're not asking something outside of your comfort zone, you're probably not asking for something you can't accomplish on your own. Yeah. And what you want to do is you want to get out on the edge of where you are, so that God picks up the slack versus stay in my comfort zone. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people don't mention like, what are you praying for? Well, what if it doesn't come through? I'd rather just not say it. Mm -hmm. And if it does, then I'll tell everybody. Mm -hmm. But I wonder how many prayers have been prayed where nobody announced it because of fear mm -hmm. of being, well, you're, you're a failure in the mm -hmm. spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. Hey, better to fail at uh, nine things and hit one yeah. than to fail at 10. You know, let's put this in perspective. I, I would think of someone like a Billy Graham would be the Elijah. Can you imagine walking in with Billy Graham and saying, God, I want a double anointing, a double portion of mm -hmm. what you put on this man. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying to somebody right now, you have to stretch your faith. Mm -hmm. You have to go to what you just said, babe, Matthew 7, 7. You have to ask. And then you seek and you knock mm -hmm. and you're relentless with it because I believe God wants to give a double portion. I believe that we are living in that Acts 2, that God's really getting ready to pour out a manifestation of miracles. And if you don't believe it, if you don't expect it, you'll never see it. And mm -hmm. by faith, ask for a double portion. So um, let's talk a little bit because I want to segue to our, our passage today for our um, fasting passage. And we're talking about Daniel here. So again, if you don't have my book, I want to encourage you to pick up the book, Fasting for Miracles. You can get it on my website, TammyHotsonPillar.com. You can go to Amazon. But we're fasting for a double portion in today's passage, and it's with Daniel. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the story of Daniel, remember they've been taken into captivity. It's rough on them. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking about this in our last podcast. You know, you asked like, God, why? Daniel said, you know, God, why were, did you bring your people into captivity? Mm -hmm. And he did it because he was separating them. 
But here is Daniel in chapter 1. We find this fast. It's a fast. Many of us know the Daniel fast, a 21-day fast where he comes to God, and he's not going to eat the food. He's not going to eat of the wine. But he had a double portion on him, didn't he? Daniel had an anointing on him. Yeah, and I think the, the word double portion, that might seem odd to some people because you say, I'd like to get the first portion. Mm. I need the first helping. <laughs> I'm, I'm not ready to go back for seconds yet. And, uh, and I think it's true. I mean, let's define what that means. Okay. I think it, what it means to me is that I have a, a sense of the presence of God in my life to some degree. What I want is I want that to double. Mm. So rather than make it so hard to get there, mm. like, well, I'm not even close to Elijah, mm. why don't you just take your life right now and say, what would happen if you could just 2x your connection with yeah. God? Yeah. If you could 2x your prayer life, you could 2x your seeing the hand of God in your life, mm -hmm. and make it simple. Mm -hmm. And then you can, maybe you say, okay, I'm gonna, that's gonna be my plan for the next six months or year. Mm -hmm. Then next year, when the, your new book comes out mm -hmm. on fasting the following year, um, then you can say, well, what if I 2X that one? And I think we have to make change manageable. Yeah. And sometimes it becomes such a far run. It's kind of like putting me in the Olympics. You it's know, not, it's not it's gonna, not gonna go happen, well. Babe? It's not gonna go well. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be a lot of fun to watch, yeah. uh, but I'm not setting any records. Okay. But I think if you say, I'd like to get in a race with three-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Now I'm feeling good about myself, right? <laughs> so Why? Because I, I think I might be able to beat most of them. Mm -hmm. So I think make your spiritual life manageable. Mm -hmm. I think the thing your book does is it does that. Mm -hmm. It allows you to process through it at your own pace, mm -hmm. read the story, make your personal applications, yeah. and then move to the next uh, chapter. Yeah, so good. And I think you're right. I, we throw out that word double portion. It's obviously, I love the story because I love the faith of Elijah mm -hmm. that he just said in the shadows of this great man of God. And it makes me, honestly, it activates my faith. And I just say, I need to get around people that walk out their faith. And that's mm -hmm. what Elisha did. And then he was bold enough to ask for that double portion. Mm -hmm. And so whether you're ready for a double portion or you just man need to manage the first portion, I wanna encourage you to go deeper with God. Whatever that looks like for you, take one step closer to Him. We're living in a culture right now where we've made everything so simple and so easy. You need to activate your faith. You need to trust again. Mm -hmm. You need to see miracles in your life. So I wanna encourage you right now. You know, many of you have told you that that if you need prayer in your life, I'd love to hear from you. And you can reach me at the name of the book, Fasting for Miracles at gmail.com. Fasting for Miracles at gmail.com. Send me your prayer request. If you're struggling right now and you say, Tammy, I don't even know who to talk to. I don't know where to go. If you have a request and you want me to put it in our, our wall, I would love to hear from you. And then again, get this book. It's very practical, it's very easy. As you know, I have coaching videos for you every single morning, I will meet you in this fast. But again, fasting is biblical. We find it from the beginning to the end of the book. Moses fasted, Elijah fasted, Nehemiah fasted, Jesus fasted, the disciples fasted. Fasting will activate your faith. So I wanna encourage you guys, pick up the book, join us on this 21 day fast. And I wanna just tell you again, whether you're watching us on our YouTube channel, go down right now and activate that bell so you know every time we put up a new video. Or if you're watching us on our podcast, will you please share these with your friends? Encourage people to listen. Every week I bring you, I hope, words of wisdom and real and honest conversation. So babe, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, great to be with it's you. And I'm fun. looking forward to this big launch of your book. Thank you so much. Thank you guys, we love you, have a great day. We'll see you soon.